the owner of Sarge's Shoe Repair on South 7th Street in Terre Haute. You tend to talk to yourself in this job. Brad Smith. But we have a lot of fun. We laugh and joke. Blends personality. I pick on everybody that walks through the door. Well, if I yodel, you know that I just got myself with a needle. <laughs> and a hands-on work ethic to provide comfort to customers' footwear. My customers are the best people. They, uh, you know, they range in age from little bitty grandkids coming in to see me to grandma and grandpa bringing them. Sometimes you gotta give him a little love tap. After serving 20 years in the Army, where he earned the nickname Sarge. You don't have to be really talented to do this. Van Gogh, I'm not. Smith started his shoe repair career 23 years ago. Using his nickname for the name of his business, Smith took a unique path for customers to learn his business hours, courtesy of a life-sized wax figure. George is my open and close sign. Uh, if he's on the porch, I'm in here working. If George ain't on the porch, I ain't here. Brad credits his father, William, for teaching him the ropes in the shoe repair profession. But the drastic drop in shoe repair shops nationwide has resulted in an adjustment for him and his customers. Back in 1946, there were 70,000 shoe repair shops in this country. Today, there's less than 3,000. If you don't have a shoe repair shop, what do you do? You throw them away and go buy a brand new pair. One thing Brad Smith refuses to throw away is his sense of humor. If you're not careful, you can end up being part of a shoe. A fitting slogan from a man who's made a life of a business that's hanging by a thread. So fluid. So smooth. So natural. I just pretty much start off with an idea and expand on it as I play. Self-taught on both the piano and the guitar, instruments like extensions of his hands, freeing feelings into a beautiful sound. It's always been there to express myself, for me to express myself, even if no one's listening. It's still a way, it's still a channel for me to get that out. Laquarius Page composes quite the melody in his free time. But he's just as dynamic on the basketball court. Good, you, good, you. Two talents that seem so different, but have striking similarities. Really good music is putting together, uh, you know, a possession after possession after possession. That'd be my take. It all comes down to practice especially with music, but passion is the reason why you practice, I feel like. You sure. keep practicing because you want to. It's a deep desire to succeed, setting Paige up to score on the floor and hit the right note on the keys. If he continues to do what he's doing right now, I think, you know, the sky's the limit for him as far as his music career, but, you know, I think Coach Lanson wants him to focus on basketball for the time being, so we'll see what he does after, after school. He's so talented. I think Q is a... Uh, talented enough to do about whatever he wanted to do, but playing music, if that's his passion, I, I, I think he'd be great at it. Music and basketball, two key components of one young man's life. Music's been there when basketball wasn't, and basketball's been there when music wasn't, so always on. Together, in perfect harmony. With Chief Photojournalist Mike Latta, Russ Rawling, News 10. Okay, guys, time to get a little serious here. It's weird. <laughs> Pour some sugar on me. It's just a weird little thing. Your lipstick stains. Well, it was a fluke. I got a ukulele for Christmas a couple of years ago. When I'm just kind of trying to learn how to play it. Tiny bubble. I was starting to raise money for this Walk With Me event that supports folks with disabilities. And then I ended up playing a song for a friend of mine who made a donation, and that turned into, well, if one person will pay a little bit for me to, you know, to sing a song for a donation, then maybe folks will do more of that. But people are paying for it, so I don't know if they're, they're punishing themselves or they're really interested in what I've go, got going on here. I consider myself a pretty mediocre singer. Welcome to the Hotel California. And my ukulele playing is not quite that good. <laughs> like I've got some heavy metal. I've done Debbie Gibson. I get lost. Lady Gaga. No, she can't read my poker face. 
you know, I could probably use a tutor on doing heavy death metal on a ukulele. I need that kind of help. <laughs> Let me know what your song is. We'll get it up here. Take care, guys. Here is where you're trying to get. Get on there. The center of a small board. Oh. Woo! In a game that's huge. <laughs> Men, women, kids, it don't matter. Everybody participates and there's everybody here to play too, so. All about the throw. A throw that's universal. Bowling, softball, all this kind of rolls the same. Horseshoes, it all pretty much pretty close to the same throw. That's why I don't take a step. So I didn't take a step in horseshoes either. This is cornhole. So aptly named here in the Midwest. As you can see, the object is simple, but the results not always easy. Oh. A crowd pleaser for sure. I got a grandson that throws them. Um, my kids throw them. Picnics are great. Just anybody can play this game. And practice. It's like anything else. The more you play, the better you get. Makes perfect. You're shooting, buddy. <laughs> it's great for bonding. Saw you, Mar. Sometimes too great. You can do it. But in a game so simple, and in this case, so satisfying, <laughs> the smile says it all as the bags keep piling up. With Chief Photojournalist Mike Latta, Ross Rowling, Sports 10.